fan of pneumatic. Hmm. What about you, Dennis? You ever seen a pneuma live? No, no, not that I can recall. Uh, I think with the, you know, it'll be a little bit, but I think eventually I do want to try out and kind of branch off to try other other machines eventually and see if I like them. If I don't, I can always sell them. But I mean, I as as far as I know right now, I do I love my Scion. Um, like I talked about in the past, um, I definitely want to try lining more with coils and kind of getting my myself back into that. So um, just gotta figure out what's gonna be what's gonna work best for me. Cause you know, for everybody, everybody has their own preference on what works best for them. So. So I was thinking as another topic for this episode, um, since we haven't really caught up on all of the content and things that we normally talk about in the shop, yeah. that we could talk about some of the things that we've been watching and, and enjoying in quarantine. And, uh, <laughs> oh, the Numa 4 is not pneumatic. It's an electric pen. Okay. What company's making that? I'll have to look into it and check it out. Um, but yeah, um, Dennis and I definitely all often like to talk pop culture and uh you know movies shows all sorts of good media um so to start it off we had mentioned that space force is out dude space force is so good i can't uh, wait like it's, it's strange like... not to look at him and think michael scott but he like yeah. he fucks with that role a little bit and he almost like i think they almost toyed with like the first episode of like messing with people like how similar they could be painted and then he has this like more serious intelligence like different side because he portrays a general so he's like definitely still you know using Carell style hilarity but uh isn't it isn't it written or like uh or produced by the same similar people that did the office yeah the uh Mos, i think is like, the one that's involved yeah heavily he, like, did did the second season on or something like that it was a guy like i was just reading the article about it and some critics actually aren't too fond of the series. They think it's it's a little something about how his character is. They rem, his character's remind is very. The critics say that his character is very similar to how Michael was in the office during the first season. How he was kind of just a little worse than what he ended up being the second season and on. But I definitely want to check it out because it looked funny. Yeah, like it looked really good. <laughs> it's solid so far it's not like i haven't had too many moments that were like insanely funny yeah. but a movie that is like insanely funny is this movie called the wrong missy that's also on netflix bro i saw that on netflix that looked interesting you with david the wrong person, david right? david spade yep dude that movie you like you and trisha gotta watch that shit together you guys like you guys will be shitting for sure like trust <laughs> me it's it's Definitely got so many outrageous, absurd moments. This bitch, the wrong messy bitch, is like one of the best characters that's ever been invented. I, Trust me, uh, you're gonna yeah, love I saw it. I trailer for that like the other day, and I'm like, this looks actually pretty funny. Uh, that, oh, it's sick, it's dude. It's good so, tattoo references. Like, I would be very surprised if uh, Flash from that show did not sell. <laughs> um. Uh, there's an, well, did right. you see Coffee and Kareem when it came out? No. Coffee and Kareem is fire. Hmm. That's, That's with Ed cool. Helms and uh, the young kid. I think. It's like a, was... yeah, it's like a R rated, I'm pretty sure. It's solid. Check that out. Solid movie as well. He dates yeah, his kid's right mom now. and then goes on like this insane plot unfolds. You know, because he's a cop and the kid's like trying to fuck around and fuck him over because he doesn't like that he's with his mom. Huh. I'll definitely check that out. I'll put that on my list. Because right now, um, we started watching Ozark. So we're about halfway into that. Halfway into this season? Three? Second season. Second Second season? season? All right. That's a good dude. They're all good. They're all good, but that's a bingeable show right there. Yeah, well, the reason why it took me a long, like, long time is because when the first season came out, I was at my, um, I would bring my 
my Apple TV to the shop and Justin would uh, found it and he started watching it. So I kept watching like bits and pieces of it. So I, I ended up kind of losing interest. So I'm like, I kind of, it's kind of all over the place. I don't really know what's going on. I've already kind of seen a good chunk of it the first season at the time. And then like her parents started watching and they're like, oh, you guys definitely got to watch this. And it's very similar to me. It kind of reminds me of Breaking Bad a little bit. De- you know, definitely. To, to That's the vibe I got right away. And then it has its own spin, of course. Yeah. So, uh, but it's good. It, you know, we usually watch about two, three episodes each night and kind of go from there. Uh, there's another show I'm watching right now. If you haven't seen it, definitely watch it. Uh, it's called uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Have you I haven't seen, that? seen it. No. Dude. So it's, think of think of how The Office is, where it's like a show within a show. Mm-hmm. But instead of instead of what's going on in an office, it's about vampires and what they do on their night to night basis. The fuck? Okay. And it's really, it's just really ridiculous. It's on FX. So okay. You can, watch, you can like watch on like Hulu if you have it. Yeah. And uh, there's like three seasons. Okay. And, and I guess it's like a movie too, uh, but it has nothing to do with the show. So it's like these it's like these three vampires who like live in New York. And, and it's just, uh, it's just re- as ridiculous as you would think like the office would be. Like they just do really like dumb things. They're like the worst vampires ever. <laughs> like the worst as in like most terrible or most like. They're just inefficient vampires. Okay. Yeah. Like, so um, they're, they're outdated. Like they dress like wicked outdated. Cause they, they're from like, um, Staten Island or something like that. <laughs> and <What? they're, laughs> yeah, they live in Staten Island. And um, they haven't, they've been there for like a couple of hundred years and they haven't taken like New York yet, like at all. But there's like different areas of New York that other vampires have taken over. Like, uh, what's his name? He's have his own show. Carell? No. Um, he used to be on the league, and then he ended up having his own show for a while. Um, Nick Kroll. Yes, he's actually he appears in an episode as like a vampire in like New York, and he has like his own nightclub and stuff. And there's a scene, there's an episode where one of the vampires has his hat, and it's all made out of like human skin, and it's like a cursed hat. But he okay. has his curse, but everything keeps ha- going wrong. Ah. <laughs> and so he ends up he ends up losing the hat because uh, he's like uh, he ends up like trading the hat for for something. And he's like, all right, now you know, get the fuck out of my my club. Bye, see ya. And as they're leaving, the whole club like explodes. <laughs> it like catches fire. Jeez. And he ends up taking the hat back. Oh my god! Because the they're at the hospital. It, it like it just gets it gets ridiculous as you watch on. It's, there's like three seasons, so, and I think I think the fourth season's on right now. But uh, just because I've been trying to watch new shows, so like it's been kind of one of those things where like I right, I'll take a look at this and it's pretty funny. I'd recommend it. So Amazon's got another banger besides uh, the boys too. Um, yeah. So it's called Upload about an afterlife where you're like uploaded consciousness into your afterlife and you have like a living guardian angel and you're like conscious you know through the transition you have your memories and whatnot and then like you have a data plan which is paid for by living people that is based on like or by you before you die of like what you can afford and how much stuff you can process and how nice your things can be um and this uh there's like a murder mystery associated inside of it too based on the main character so it's it's quality it's like it's humorous and like quirky but entertaining i'll I'll check that out the end of it was like i think it was could have been done better but it's definitely gonna have a second season sweet yeah, I'm still waiting on stuff about the boys season two. Like, I haven't heard anything ever since this whole quarantine situation. Yeah, and they have I've looked it up. Already finished. Filmed. 
Okay, so maybe it'll still be on normal production schedule. I bet we still hopefully. see it then, like hopefully sooner than later. Maybe yeah. this summer. So I got, that's what um, I thought we were talking about before. Yeah. I got, uh, well, originally, the last time we talked about it, they, you know, it was kind of, it was just going and going because they already had like teaser trailers and stuff. But yeah, I've seen those. about it since. Teasers look good. Uh, yeah. So um, I got Trisha into watching Umbrella Academy. Because the new season comes out in July. Or, if you haven't watched that, I, you know, definitely get on that. It's only like 10 episodes. You know, think of like, for anybody, anybody who hasn't seen it, think of it like kind of a darker version of X-Men where everybody hates Professor X for <laughs> raising them. Um, let me see. There's... Oh. La- Avatar Last Airbender is now on Netflix, so I expect you to have that finished watch by the time we get back to Good. work. Good, because I'm already <laughs> fucking hooked on it, dude. I've been watching every night. Have you? Pretty much, yeah. I'm on, uh, I think, season one, episode 13 now. Yeah, like what they, do you think so far? They just got out of, like, the rock ridge with the yeah. bugs, but the... Uh... I mean, it's it's good. Like the it, the story's really compelling. I love the art, dude. The art, there's so much good art in it, and uh, it reminds me of like Ghibli mixed with DBZ in a way. Like if yeah, you could put it, it that way. It goes. It has such a the thing about it, and I think the reason why it's pretty big and popular about it was just because of the fact that it's very um, there's a lot of deep structure behind the the show itself, and like there's a deeper story and you end up feeling for a lot of the characters. They all have their own development through, throughout the seasons. And it just, it's, it kind of like, you feel for them a lot of times, like in certain situations. It's, there's going to be like, there's an episode, I can't remember if it's in the first season or in the second season. I won't give any, anything away, but you'll, you'll end up getting like, really upset and like, and feel for, for the main character because of, of something that happens. And I believe it's in the second season. And then you find out like an episode or so later, like backtracks to certain parts of why he, like what happens after in a way. It's hard to explain without giving too, too much yeah. away, but you're going to be like, it's probably one of the more like upsetting episodes. Cause you're like, damn dude, you know, hopefully everything works out because you don't know if it's going to. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> word. Yeah, but overall, like, it was such a uh, success that that's why they ended up making that that sequel series. So, like, once you're done with that, I'll give you the sequel series to watch, and because um, it, it like kind of continues after that. So, and this is perfect because now you'll be ready for the live action series that comes out to Netflix. Which, especially if you're big into martial arts and stuff, they took that show, the car, even the cartoon. They actually brought in um, a martial arts master to help them um, create distinct um, martial arts moves for each um, individual region. So, like, so like, there's a you know, he had something. They had him do something for like the Fire Nation. He had something for like you know, Water Nation, so on and so forth. So they all had distinct actual like moves and they brought that guy back to do the live action stuff. So they brought him back oh, to sure. help nice. train people to do the live action stuff so that everybody has a proper training for that region of which element to control. So Yeah, so it should be well coordinated between the two. That's nice. Yeah. It's crazy yeah. that he had like enough experience that they would allow him to have any take in the choreography yeah. of the fights. I mean, it's it's just the, like I didn't I didn't realize that, but it's in it's actually in you can probably watch like a, it's like a short documentary that you can watch on the DVD or the Blu-ray, um, and they talk about that and they they introduce the guy and he's like you know I figured with them being you know a Fire Nation I figured you know this would be the style that they would actually essentially associate with or you know um, being. Uh, Air nomads essentially establishing that they're pretty much like monks, so they would establish like a kung fu style, and so on and so forth. So I've noticed a little bit of that because 
I I've definitely noticed like the fight the fighting styles are distinct, and I'm like I wonder how much they base these each on different martial arts styles for different um, elements. And I think that's what made it like I think that's a part of a part of the other reason why I made it so big and so popular. So hopefully you haven't seen the live action movie. <laughs> nah, nah. I yeah. you you had dogged on it, so I've been refraining. Yeah, I mean it's on Netflix. You're more than welcome to watch it after the series and talk all the shit you want on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, wait until uh, you actually see the, the the show first. I got a bunch of stuff. Otherwise, I want to get into. Um, yeah. yeah. So, like Scorpion's Revenge, dude. Mortal Kombat. Yeah, Scar- absolutely yeah, yeah. sick. Like, just put that at the top of your list. <laughs> so uh, fucking good, today. bro. Uh, 1917 was fire too. Yeah. Uh, oh, isn't that that war movie? Yeah, dude. And it's all one like it's shot in one shot. I don't know yeah. if you've ever heard me movie snobbing out, but I always bitch about like American style film cutting of like average four second cuts. So it's like. You, that's why, like, when you drive by, you always see someone TV looks like it's changing channels, even though it's just like the screen's flashing because it's sharp cuts that yeah. like keep American low low attention audiences gripped on the television by having enough like flashing for their fucking minds to just melt into the rhythm. Yeah, um, I mean that's cool because I like I like stuff like that. It's so do, suspenseful, like, if dude, it's 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 nuts because you don't get those moments like they strategically build in a couple little things here and there but it's nuts to to the degree that like i didn't even really know it the first time i watched it i just loved the movie then i was talking to someone about they're like that's the one in one shot right and i'm like yeah now that you say it (laughs) i I can say yeah i'm telling you man if you like uh if you like that like if you haven't watched i mean i don't know how you enjoy like any kind of horror stuff but if you watch uh the haunting on hill house there's a whole episode where it's dedicated to no cutaways oh shit it's done and it's done it's probably one of my i'll watch episodes. that and i'll watch it, it yeah uh i'd recommend probably it's it's one of the more creepier shows i mean um uh, to a point where like Trisha, she loves like horror movies and stuff like that and horror shows. And there were a few times where we actually had to stop because she was like, All right, we need a break from this. <laughs> oh my god. There's, there's, yeah, this point. She was kind of like, holy crap. All right, we gotta take a second. So like I'm interested then, because I my complaint about horror usually is that it's like too predictable and not no. like thrilling enough because I'm too um I get too like Oh, that can't be real, or yeah, obviously no. this is the right thing to do. And then I'm like, this is gonna happen in two seconds. So I like the movies that like really throw you off of that. And or yes. like if done right, can do that. But I feel like most of the time that I go into like modern horror movies or shows, I'm like, meh. Nah, this is definitely one of those things where it's like you get you definitely get will get creeped out. And usually I'm the same way, like. I don't like a lot of horror movies only because of the fact that they are kind of predictable and there's very few horror movies in between where I'm like, that was a good one. That was definitely worth it. But this show is definitely worth it. But there's a there's an episode that what they do, they only do throughout the whole episode. It's like a almost hour, it's like an hour long episode. They only Damn. do two cutaways. And that's because throughout the show they do uh, present day and then they do um like a flashback. So, cause you kind of learn about the family a little bit during the flashback. But in the, in that season, um, or in that episode, there's like the first 15 minutes, there's no cutaway. Everything's done very smoothly. And then they do one cutaway and it's only because they do a flashback. And then when they're in the flashback, they do no cutaway at all either. Until they until it goes back to the present day, and then like that's the only time that they do like a cutaway. But other than that, like there's just certain things that they do that you're like, holy crap! You know what? They had to time that perfectly, otherwise it wouldn't have worked. Yeah, they had to move certain people around. Uh, but this doesn't really give anything away. But in in the episode, like their fought like the family's father 
is talking to his kids and you see them as adults in present day and the camera like turns and as he's still talking to them it turns over and you see the kids again and they're all little kids so like he's talking to them as they were little kids and then it goes all the way back around and you see them as adults so like it's done it's done like real good timing like it's just done really really well and that was probably one of my favorite episodes it was the same thing with um daredevil uh first season daredevil i think it's episode two there's a whole fight scene where it's all done all in one shot um so i like stuff like that it's pretty cool doesn't often make it into like main um like box office movies either i think there was like a 11 minute straight scene in the hateful eight when tarantino dropped that that was like everyone was like, oh, one of the longest like straight scenes that anyone's ever done, and I bet that they probably did like a real one take on it, where yeah. they were like actually one shotting and not cutting, but I'm sure they you know did some sick movie magic um, for 1917 to get some of this shit done while like cutting, like because it's obviously not done in one loop, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, you- I mean. Definitely, I, I remember reading something about it where they most of it was done was trying to do it all in one take, like um, you know, one fluid motion. Um, and I think they did take time where they cut it away, like they did do cutscenes, but you can't tell. Cause it's yeah, you long. can't tell. Yeah, they edited perfectly, like every like that shit is edited so nicely to make it like so good, and it's so smooth it really like really like sucks you in and brings you on the adventure. But I mean, um, I'll have to check that out. Um, what was it? I, I've been catching up on a lot of like mainstream box office big hits that people have been referring me to since like 2015. That I've been like, one day, one day. Like <laughs> I did in new Scooby Doo movie. Yeah, solid dude. Think? I love the effects. I love the art. Um, the concept from the jump I thought was good. I wish they would have spent more time with them as kids with like the developing story, maybe yeah. even just like another five, 10 minutes of different stuff. Cause I thought that was one of the better parts. And then I didn't like, you know, the real villain, um, where he was able to like bring up some sort of underworld nonsense. And it was all real, like using creepy, huge Cerberus skulls that he farmed up. So I'm like, you missed like the mark on on Scooby Doo. Like they well, they did try to kind of give you that for a second when they like they pulled his face off and it was like Simon Cow for a second. No, that's <laughs> fine too, and I I would have been fine with it being dastardly. I just don't like the idea. Like dastardly, he's been he's the one from Dudley Do Right, right? Yeah. So, like they're thought, mixing and matching a bunch of stuff anyway from Hanna Barbera, but they're putting together something that like it's got to stick to that scooby-doo like they did such a fucking good job on the new zombie island and the 13th ghost remake that they did last year which were both animated um like normal like high quality version of like an older style scooby-doo animation which is it's all sick and like the way the concept the way they pull it off um is all so fucking good but then they must have like lost these people before this movie because it doesn't hit the mark like they nailed it with every part of every effect and it looks gorgeous and i totally love all of that but i just don't like the way that they went with the story not involving normal everyday shit that like a person was using under a mask like that's the bad guy's gotta be like in some way cleverly arranging it or whatever like whenever they incorporate real ghosts or real you know whatever i'm like not feeling it yeah uh since you saw the movie are you planning you think you you'll make some uh flash sheets for that probably for yeah like- well it'll be more of like definitely some flash and definitely some uh portrait um stuff that i would like to try but the flash, I think, is like the 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 cooler part because they worked a lot like with the old effects. Like I loved this the audio that they put into it. Like when 
they ran and stuff like that when Scooby and Shaggy get up from that bowling alley scene and they the feet make that scrambling sound, you know, before they get going. Like that old school shit is like what it's all about. So like I think maybe embodying some of that type of stuff with onomatopoeia, like actually shown comic book style could be like interesting. Make it like more of like a poppy rendition of it. Pop art style. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, like there's that. I I might do some stuff for like the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Oh uh, hell yeah! Because like that movie was that movie was so good. Yep, uh, I agree. Already, so good. You know, it, it was just done very well. I think I I I am curious about how how it would have looked with the the first design as much as people hated it. You know what I mean? Like. I enjoy it. Like I enjoyed the new design. Don't get me wrong. Like I think the movie was done very, very well. But I'm still kind of curious on how it would have looked if you had kept. Like, would it still been that good, or would people still have? Would it like would the movie still have been that good, or would people still have disliked it because of the way he looked? You know Probably I mean? that. Like, I feel like they did it pretty well, but I agree. I didn't hate the first rendition as much as most people. Yeah. So I mean, they try to give him a little more realistic look. I guess, but I think I think because that whole Detective Pikachu movie came out last year and Pikachu looked like Pikachu, so they kind of wanted to do like, all right, so if you can do that in Hollywood, why can't you make Sonic look like Sonic? Yeah, and like I get it. So uh, they actually they actually announced a sequel for that officially, like they for Detective Pikachu. Sick. Oh no, for uh, for Sonic. For Sonic. Oh good. Um, but I can That's see, also I can see a sequel for that. The post credit scenes for Sonic were great. Like, I'm excited for the Tails dynamic, and I hope they bring Knuckles, of course. Like, how can you not in a Sonic 2 movie if you don't bring both of them in? It, like, you Ten- would just be squandering. He, so- he was in Sonic 3 is when they introduced him, so they could Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, Sonic if they are going to stick with the game game stuff, but I feel like they've there's nothing about San Francisco in the first no, Sonic game. I feel, like thing, the way, I feel like the way they're kind of going with it, if you've ever seen... Sonic X. Nah. Uh, like back in like the early two thousands, it was a series. Um, and it was big because like that's when like Shadow the Hedgehog came out and Yeah, okay, so I saw a limited limited Sonic X I then. Um uh, he ends up being he ends up being in the real world. And so I feel like they, they may have taken partial elements from that in a way. Mm-hmm. Um but but it should be interesting. Uh, I mean, I like I like it, you know, brings up my childhood, you know. Um, cause I used to watch Sonic all the time. I used to watch Adventures of Sonic and like New Adventures of Sonic. Yeah, I mean, those were the those were the shit. <laughs> yeah, and the I thought the way that they embodied Eggman and stuff like was perfect with like the drones that just like kept turning into more smaller shit. You know, yeah. like they did it like they did it well. They I think they worked with like a a advanced sensibility. Yeah, I think um, I think he did a good job playing the character. I think he was a perfect fit. Uh, the sequel, uh, I read, I read something about um, him wanting to wear an actual fat suit. To, oh to shit! Play like that, uh, play Eggman. But um, it should be interesting, like when the sequel comes out, if it ever, you know, with everything that's going on, it, it'll be a little bit because they pushed everything back. All the yeah. movies have been pushed back. I know. Sad. Uh, yeah. Guardians you know, 3 pushed back even further than... You, you know it's supposed before. to come out this month, or this week? The original the original date for Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was supposed to be this I month. I know. I know. So, I hate it. <laughs> I started rewatching like I started rewatching the movies again. I did um, a round of Marvel not too long ago. Yeah, I actually just rewatched majority of the DC movies again. I figured, you know what, it's been a long time since I've seen Batman versus Superman and Justice League. <laughs> nice. Um, and, you know, I watched Wonder Woman, Aquaman. I watched, finished watching Shazam yesterday. So good. Um, I've been still waiting to watch Aquaman. I, it's on HBO, so I gotta watch yeah. it. And I know that that you one's pretty HBO good. Max? 
Did you get the it's, HBO Max? It's the same thing. Now nah, I have HBO Go through like someone else's cable, but it's got all the same shit for now, at least. The well, the di- the difference with it right now is it like has like it's starting to they're starting to incorporate like TV series and stuff like that, so you can watch like you can watch like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, or you can watch like like DC actual like DC stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, they're getting Rick and Morty. Yeah, Rick and Morty. You can watch the first three seasons of Rick and Morty. Uh, the Big Bang Theory. You can watch the whole series, the whole complete season of that. And if you haven't, if you haven't seen it, there's something new for you to watch. Mm-hmm. I binge watched that last year, and was able to actually watch like the last episode, um, right on time. So it was weird that like I binged it, and then I get to the last episode that they were getting ready to air, and I watched it. And I'm like. Kind of, it's kind of depressing that's over. <laughs> yeah, caught up in the nick of time, right? Yeah. Uh, managed to squish in 15 seasons in about a month. So <laughs> It's crazy. Uh, um, it's drawing at night life for you, though. Yeah, it's true. That's pretty much what I did. <laughs> um, definitely what I did. Hey, buddy. Did you finish yours? Okay. All right, go sit down with mommy. I'll get you one in a minute. Another popsicle. Send it up. Well, it's, a, it's actually like a, a, it's like a, it's a homemade one, but it ha- all it has is like fruit and yogurt and stuff like that. Oh, so it's, sounds it, it good. It was pretty much like a, yeah, it was pretty much a, a, a smoothie. Hell yeah. Put it in like popsicle I'm, form. I'm about that. <laughs> so yeah, there's like, you can go too crazy with it. But can't give me a sec, kids cause... kids can't have enough popsicles in this t- type of heat, dude. It's just so hot. No, no, but at least it can be healthy. Yeah, true. <laughs> so yeah, when he gets back, I'm gonna get into uh, some Rick and Morty discussion. The Rick and Morty has been pretty fire lately. My favorite episode of this uh, season, I think, is episode uh, seven, eight. It's the ass the vat of acid episode episode eight i think um so so hilarious so super clever every time you think that uh morty's finally catching up it's always the script has been flipped and it's uh rick that's got the upper hand <laughs> also this uh new rick and morty i'm gonna call it a rick and morty spin-off because it's so similar on hulu by the co-creator of rick and morty it's called solar opposites and that shit is fire as well just as good as rick and Mo- not as just as good but i would say it's like a b-roll of of rick and morty that is just phrased in a different way to make it so the good ideas that they didn't want to work with didn't go to waste that's my guess at what it is One sec. All right. All right. Sorry about that. Um. Yes. With the with the new season of Rick and Morty, I definitely I'm probably definitely gonna draw some stuff up for that as a flash sheet. Hell yeah! There's a definitely good uh, scenes throughout the season that I'm like, I'll be well, a perfect piece. The vat of acid I was just talking about is my favorite episode so far, and I feel like them underwater with that vat of acid, like the green tones over there, you know, normal tone, like the way they filtered it with the acid in front of them was so good. Dude, that and would make such an interesting was, flash. That would be definitely that episode was crazy. Yeah, it was. But yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. Like, getting some really good like green tone and stuff <laughs> like that for that works out so nicely. <laughs> the end where it just all comes together and Rick's like, 
oh, you got to get in the acid and like how willing people would be to accept that as like the truth if they saw that feel like, oh, well, there's a vat of acid. Of course, like you melt everyone's seen Roger Rabbit. So when he gets in the vat of acid, you know, he's going to be gone. Oh my God. It was so ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, that's part, like there, there's, there's still a couple episodes I say like are hit and misses. Like last, this, this past week's episode was, it was good, but it wasn't that good. I feel. It was funny for Jerry to have the thing like, dude, Rick gets the ultimate burn on him too. He's like, you had a fucking godly rod. You decided to make bugs. You could have cured cancer. You fuck. Like, you could have done anything with just the thought. Oh, man. <laughs> it, was, it was just ridiculous. Like, there were definitely moments that were funny, but um, I wouldn't put it in my like top three favorite episodes. No, so God far. no. Oh, yeah. for even for this season, yeah, I don't know if I would. But... Yeah, just just for this season, not not for the whole series as as a whole. Yeah, there's some pretty fucking good um, episodes from the first half. So, oh, but, space uh... snakes. And the poop. The, that's the, probably one of my favorite episodes. The king shitting episode. King of shit. Oh, yes. So, so, see, I could definitely draw that. Like him. Like on the toilet with a crown. <laughs> Yo, so to check out what Andrea scored off of Walmart when she was shopping for our food, she was going through clearance. Oh, nice. <laughs> Got that Death Crystal Morty dude. and That's awesome. It was like a dollar and twenty cents. What? Well, I never heard of even a pop selling that low. It's because the clearances oh, were so not good. Like that, that, it's not like that pops that old either. No, it's, but it's it's yeah. the perfect age for it to have come out and been in stores literally right as people were probably not really buying frivolous shit at the beginning oh, of true. COVID, and then lasted while those stores were pretty much inaccessible and people weren't really going for anything other than food or necessities yeah. before they finally ended up on clearance and then they're like just fucking get rid of all this shit online quick I think about that <laughs> that makes sense that's sweet you only paid like a dollar and some change for it yep yep so daryl's asking in the chat if we've watched solar opposites yet and i said that i have i was endorsing it um it's the co-creator of Rick and Morty. He's got like a spinoff oh. on, I'm calling it a spinoff on Hulu. I firmly believe that there's a chance that one day like they will come in contact. Like the name alone, it's it's called Solar Opposites. And I'm pretty sure that's like just to be a joke about how fucking similar the show is to Rick and Morty in its dynamics. Yeah. With it having enough of a difference to have its own flavor. And then also totally being able to like eventually have it come out maybe two seasons down the road or something rick and this guy are the same guy or like like whatever like you know sure. but it's it's good it's like i've enjoyed it and it's got a cool like it's the cool rick and morty art style but they do like it's like it's down to even like how they bite on those like dotted eyes and all that stuff like it's there's clearly an, an arrangement I feel like going on. I need to look deeper into it to understand it, but I feel like there's got to be some arrangement of like you can use this art style, you know, because you're in on Rick and Morty so far already. And I I feel like it's probably ideas that either this person has or has heard that were good, and maybe almost made Rick and Morty, but then also we're just like we're not good enough or don't want to go with it for whatever reason, and it can all end up in this like other shit eventually huh i think um i'll definitely check it out is it just a hulu exclusive show i think it's just on hulu right now okay and they're just doing what like a um, episode per week or something uh i mean i don't know how many they dropped but when i was watching it yeah i got to like episode three or four right away so and i think i was watching it pretty soon after it came out okay uh, I'll, I'll have to put that on my list yeah, I want to know what you feel about it when you watch it. Like, at first, you're going to be like, this is bullshit. This is a rip-off Rick and Morty. This is a fucking well, I know, be I know a second-rate rip, Rick. But it's it's good. Like, it's got its own valid style to it. Yeah, I definitely know it's, it's you know, it's made by the same guys. So, uh, 
I'm sure they'll do like kind of little Easter eggs because if I remember correctly, they also did uh, Gravity Falls series. It, like that's the, what it is. Yeah. Series. Yep. And there's the first, I think it's like the first episode of Rick and Morty. They do an Easter egg to that because I guess in the Gravity Falls series, there's a point where some stuff gets thrown into a um, like a portal in there. Mm-hmm. And then in season one, episode one, where they're trying to get away from the the galactic government, they're going through portals. At one point, you see that same stuff come out of that portal. So that's oh, shit. Like a big connection to, to that. Yeah, I feel like those types of things. I'm there's probably things that I'm missing that are Easter eggish. But you, I feel like even the name where they're saying solar opposites is like polar opposites. They're like, oh, we're we're different, but you know, not. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll definitely check it out. No. Um. But overall. That we would try and keep busy. Like I finished the we finished the ranch a while back. That was awesome. Kind of disappointed on like the whole thing with uh, what's his name kind of having to lead the show because of yeah. his allegations. Yep. Because uh, it kind of it kind of made like the show depressing <laughs> in a way after he was gone. Uh, but no, that was a good that was a good series. Um. It's funny that I figured we would have watched at least like one thing that would have like connected. I guess Scoob is the one. And Trolls, you seen the new Trolls dog? <laughs> Didn't even rent it. I like you, illegally watched it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not twenty. Gonna, I'm not going to spend twenty bucks to rent for it. the rental, man. I don't know. Like, I feel them because. If you're going to go, like, if we're going to go as a family, even if we're matineeing and, like, doing it the right way, we're going to spend, like, 50 bucks to go to the theater. But, like, at home, you got to realize, like, a, that's too high for a rental, I feel like, no, for most they people. You should have done what Scooby-Doo did. You 20 bucks you just to rent sell it. For five bu- or an extra 5 bucks and you just buy it. That's but what. The other way around, right? But what was Scooby? Because Scooby was, I paid only 25 I think, or yeah, something, it pre-ordering it. It was twenty five to buy it and twenty to rent it. Okay, so, which is what they should have done for trolls. Yeah, because I mean, from like as a parent, I would not buy that shit unless I can put it on my Kindle. You know, the kids Kindles. Then I can, if I can download it. Now I have this offline content that anywhere in the car I can hand them a, a screen that has a movie, and like they can chill and do that if there's like something that arises. Like every parent knows like that nice X factor of having the iPad or, you know, whatever around if your kid likes it when you need to have that, like, I need 10 minutes uninterrupted. Here's your favorite shit, you know? Yeah. But how, let me ask you, man, during this situation, how have you guys kept yourselves um, or been able to keep your two kids busy? Because, like, I think Parker's at a point where he's just, like, this is boring. <laughs> like, I need oh, stuff to do. I mean, anytime people visit, you can tell how much the kids crave being out and being active and having, like, communities. Um, Alone had some classes, like, gymnastics classes that were hosted through Zoom calls. That was cool. Um, that hasn't been that regular. The people visiting... For us, you know, on a day-to-day basis, like, we're outside, so we have this uh, cart thing. Like, it's like a mini roller coaster for the kids that is, like, you know, plastic-like type of deal that is basically like a ramp. And we have it set up on our hill that they have been loving. So we have, like, an older one that's smaller, and now we got the new, bigger Hot Wheels one that's pretty sick. Cart uh, Parker would probably be ready for that, and it, it even it would still work in your yard. Um, yeah. because the ramp's good enough on its own and it only goes like so far. So probably be pretty safe. <clears throat> that's why like, yeah, we definitely, but know, that we thing's... definitely brought him over to like the in-laws and that's, we're trying to get him to kind of use up his energy because being here, it doesn't, you know, uh, the weather's been on and off for the past month. 
So it's yeah. hard to just bring him outside. Sometimes he wants to go for a walk, which is awesome. Uh, but it's it's been you know there are times where it's been tough, and you can definitely tell he like needs he wants to be stimulated by like not being home. <laughs> so, yeah, man. I mean we've been doing a lot of crafts. Uh, Ella, unfortunately, has like really taken to coloring and drawing and writing letters and stuff. Like she's getting into all that type of thing. Um, her and I have been doing some choreography. Uh, she does like loves this Disney Channel original movie Zombies. So we uh, do like little dance numbers that they have videos of that are from the movie explained by like one of the Disney choreographers and do like little videos of that type anything to be like getting athletic. I try to run them like legitimately around the yard at, at a real speed for at least like five to ten minutes a day because alone the other day was like my legs hurt after one like run. So I was like, you can't be a little bitch ass kid. Like you got to be able to move around outside. She's really like athletic and really strong. But I was surprised to see that like she was tired after running. I mean, not even 60, 70 yards. I feel like Dude, and not even at a full goes, sprint. Man. He just goes like he wants to do this, do that, run around, like do this. He's got the energy. He's got a lot of energy. So like, I can't wait when, you know, he's able to go back. So I want to definitely get him into something to help use that energy balance bike dude you should pick up the balance bike now as well yeah so we're gonna need i mean something if you guys go on he, walks he, he has a hard time with his actual bike right now um we got straps for it but we haven't had a chance to really get him to, to try it that way so. yeah the, i'm telling you the balance bike's way better people go now like the meta nowadays most people don't use training wheels to teach kids I shouldn't say most, but many people don't like a significant amount go with just balance bike right into like a small bike without the wheel training wheels. You yeah. know, you're not going to put them on pavement with it, but on grass and then they'll figure it out quick. There's, there's some other things like, so we learned like as a way to actually get him to be on this bike in, indoors and you put the, with the training wheels, you put like shoes underneath the training wheels, so it lifts up the back of the seat so then he can learn how to pedal that way. So it's kind of mm -hmm. very similar to your. To, to that. that thing that yeah so to your balance bike so uh we haven't had a chance to really try it with the new straps on um but we'll have to try that soon but um otherwise we've been doing some gardening we we hunt for crystals in my property so like i don't know if you have any like corners of your yard that are like rocky but like kind of digging in with hands or little tools or kids tools to like look at the rocks and like pull out if you have any like crystal ones like out here i got a huge yard plus like we just seem to have tons of quartz so like i pick up or not really i yard. but alone picks up like several decent sized stones of quartz a day if we're really looking for it so she's like really enjoying that and getting into um that type of stuff uh squirt guns now that it's Water out. We've Actually, been I've having got, fun yeah, with I that. Some water guns, uh, which like like water gonna... pistols. Um, I don't like. El Orion doesn't do great with the things with like the pump. Um, he does okay. Like he, we had one of those like water cannon things where you like siphon the water and then push it out, and he got it that like that a little bit better. But he does real sick with the pistol. He's like crazy accurate, man. Like this kid, <laughs> it's hilarious. Like how accurate he is with like throwing catching we're working on that a lot uh alone's pretty good orion's decent uh really good at like throwing more so than catching things neither of them yeah. like get the concept of like keep your eye on the ball you know like you gotta look at the ball and then i throw it and they're like eye contact the whole time I'm like i can't get eye contact when i'm trying to ask you or teach you a lesson right but like the one time i'm like keep your eye on the ball you know, this thing here that you know exactly what it is. Look at this only. Like, you don't blink away from, like, looking in my eyes. Like, what the hell? Um, well, the good thing, some of the good things we did, we have been able to do is, like, we've been able to, like, teach him some stuff. So, like, Trisha had, um, there's this thing for, for teachers that they, uh, they pick, there's, like, a website 
for teachers where they pick out these items and people can help fund them by donating money so they can get these items. Mm -hmm. So like it gets donated to the website and then the it, the items get taken off the list they want and it, it gets sent to their school. Cool. So obviously in this in this situation, it got sent here, uh, but it's stuff for like work. So she's had, uh, she was able to get like donations for items that she needed for school for, for her classroom and uh, brought here. So she, he's been able to kind of learn some stuff from those. So it's like, yeah. So like the good thing about having a wife for a teacher is, he <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, but like, there's there's some stuff that that she has. So there's like this one thing where it's 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 cards for for the alphabet, and they come with these little um, shapes, so you can put the shapes on the cards to make the alphabets. So it's like, oh, these are the pieces you need to make an A. These are the pieces you need to make a D. You know, a D, uh, so on and so forth. So he likes playing with that stuff. So um, yeah, so like there's some there's a lot of things that like there are some benefits to start, to to like what we've tried and he's got a water table so we got him those you know those little water beads that like yeah aqua beads up. dude i love yeah. aqua, those yeah we sick. got got a small they're not beads. aqua beads what are those um uh, orbeez yes yes and uh we put those in the water table and those things like blew up so he's like playing with those uh so i mean we've we've kept him busy but you can only do it for so long um, but slowly, you know, things are getting back to normal and of some kind of norm normality. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, this is going. I like, I was willing enough to venture out to Lowe's, which I think was like a big step for me where I haven't, like, I have not gone to stores. Like some people are like, Oh, you know, like going grocery shopping and shit. I'm like, fuck that. Like I'll get my groceries <laughs> delivered 10 out of 10 times. Like going Probably into the store that. is so stupid. Yeah. Let the other people go in the store, dude. There's people that need that extra money. If you got the money to not have to go to the store, you ought to fucking spend it, in my opinion. So normally like, we would, but all those like Instacart stuff were like we like a week long. Oh, oh so yeah. it's not as it's not busy enough where you're at. You don't have enough shoppers. So out here, no, it got it to that busy. That's the it got to that point. It takes a day. Well, you don't, if you, if there's not enough shoppers, then it would take a long time. But like it, as it, so in the beginning it was tough because there wasn't as many people like actually employed, you know, by Instacart. And then as like the weeks progressed into months, um, it started to be very convenient. So now like most of the stores we could order and get like same day or next day, um, like from Aldi and shit like that off Instacart. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. Oh. Got the got the Rona. <laughs> no, dude, the allergies are, are are striking, and it sucks to like have like paranoia over allergies. And now I'm like worried about what to do at work because like my allergies are so bad. I need to like maybe talk to a doctor about a better dose or whatever that can make it so I don't like sneeze. I don't want people to feel like uneasy. Yeah, um, understandable. But the and I'm not gonna accept that as an answer from other people either. Like you come in, you're like cough and sneeze and anything like that and you're like i got allergies i'm gonna be like come back that. come be like, come back when you don't have allergies you know i don't give a shit we'll finish the outline real quick but you coming back when we don't have any allergies going on because like i get that i feel uh, like you can't be too safe for like the next three months four months after opening it's gonna be you just gotta operate with like the utmost of of personal regulations and uh and strictness yeah, I mean, I get it. Uh, I think that's a big part of of the work dynamic. A little worried about that kind of thing, uh, where like it's gonna be, it's gonna be something for us to try to get used to. Uh, it's gonna be something for us to get used to, uh, getting on a uh, a certain schedule. Say hi. Hi, Parker. Uh, <laughs> um, it's going to be rough at first to try to get into a certain schedule, especially with clients and with us, um, being able to make sure that, that, you know, something like a sneeze, is it 
something that's going to be like critical you know what i mean and it's just a sneeze <laughs> yeah so but you, it's like you, you gotta have a you gotta have a count though like i'm thinking like a three strikes you're out rule or something because you know that's someone who's be sick for you because you sneeze like back three back times back in back. a row well that's how you should know it's allergies if it's just like sounding off at random but like if it's like you get a couple of occasions before you're like yeah you gotta go <laughs> That's Even myself, like I'll, I'm a, I'll, I want to hold myself to a, a high standard as well. Like get it. even even if I was just allergies and I did carry COVID, like if I was already a carrier of antibodies or anything, it's gonna be like risky for others to be around. Um, but yeah, um, there's uh. Yeah, we'll get back and we'll talk about more of that type of uh, stuff, like about what we're going to be doing and why. I think maybe the next Tatcaster, the one after that, once we discuss it further. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think that's definitely something for us to uh, talk about as a group once everybody's, you know, on. Uh, you know, like you said, we'll eventually, we're going to have a meeting and we'll figure everything out and like I said, it's it's not going to be like a quick fix to get back into the swing of things. It's just going to be something that we have to are going to have to adjust to. Who realistically, I think I think every generation we we usually get some kind of issue like this. You know what I mean? We everybody every generation experiences something like this big. Uh, and I and I don't mean by like generation by where it's just like us as like a, a group, but like the world. It's like a certain point where we kind of, something happens and this is what we got to deal with. But, yeah. You know, just one, like I said, once work gets back in things, one step at a time. You know what I miss though? I miss the chicken Caesar salad from next door. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so many things. When they I, are when I they the, are open if you if you go to the area there the Bella Pizza is available. When I when I went there a couple weeks ago to to grab those stands and stuff, he was there. I guess he's the one doing deliveries. The owner, he's the one doing deliveries right oh, now. I'm sure. Yeah, they um, can't be so busy. I saw him outside and I I said hello from a distance. So, but it was cool. I'm like, man, I can't wait, man. That's one of the first things I want to get is like a nice seed salad from there, or like. You know, when things are a little more comfortable, maybe some sakura sushi. <laughs> yeah, I've missed sushi a lot, but that's some like for me. If I get takeout right now, it's got to be something I'm 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 able to put in the oven, um, or something I can cook like at yeah. a high temperature that guarantees any additional shit is killed. Cause like, even when I went, like I did the same when I was at the shop. I said hi to to Bella, and uh, when I went in there, it was like. You know, they're not like rocking masks or anything. And I'm like, oh, you know, you're... if I was a client that was like con contemplating coming here to get food, I'd be like, Audi, just because I'm on that level of paranoia. But like, I know for a fact, like I've seen, you know, what's going on at restaurants and shit now that it's open and it's all fucking open season, baby. Like the, the fucking brewery is popping off. Like bars aren't open, but the brewery is packed to the brim, you know, yeah. like everyone's at every table parking lots full you know the insides like can't wow. like gotta be like packed tables so people are like doing their thing and like when i went to lowe's i was i was satisfied with the way that people behaved around me i thought everyone yeah. was being like very conscientious um it it actually took me a second because i had to like walk into an area and there was a guy like kind of like in transit as well and then he like stopped up and I like almost walked like kind of close and then I was like I stopped up on my own too and like figured a way to get around. But it was a weird dynamic of like how to preserve that space when you're not like for sure knowing where other people are going to walk. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's which makes me think like how how do you feel like when we're all back, you know, do you feel like we're all going to be wearing masks the whole time we're at work? You want to like, regardless? pretty much. Yeah. I mean, pretty much. So I mean, 
and it's not gonna be I mean, fun. Like wearing masks for that long, it gets like it gets rough for the ears. Like you gotta make sure you have a good mask. Like make sure you're wearing them for like prolonged amounts of time to see if they're comfortable and bearable for for dealing with that long. Because a mask for an hour is totally different than a mask for two or three or four or eight. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I think obviously you know we're gonna tat we're gonna be, we're gonna be in a tattoo shop, so we're gonna have disposable masks. Yeah, we're gonna have to be getting um, rid of a lot of masks. So we we'll have to get get rid of them and put a new one on. Get rid of it. Put a new one on, especially when we're with clients. You know what I mean? Even the so, face shields. A lot of people are doing like one-off face shields per client, which is crazy to me because those are expensive as fuck. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm like I'm pretty sure those are pretty expensive. But well, that's I mean, what they're doing you know is what? like a Actually, face shield per client to... and like peeling the plastic in front of people. To let people I mean, know the, that it's... the only thing I can think of would be to to just like to um, figure out a solution to that would be if you use barrier tape over the mask. I mean, you're gonna see things in blue. Yeah, fuck that. Like that. Yeah, yeah, that's the only downfall about that. So yeah. like, if you got clear bar barrier tape or something, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Basically, you got a 3D printer, man. You can make some head pieces and just get some plastic and boom you can make your own yeah but not not with that clarity like those fl like flexible plastic and stuff is a total is a whole own beast like it doesn't come out of the printer like that yeah super no, rigid but you can make that the head part and just order the plastic part yeah that's i mean the shields the replacement plastic parts are probably like i'm gonna have to find a good solution i've been working on that so that's like all part of what I need to figure out budget wise. That I didn't that I think is gonna be the biggest expense that I didn't really see coming is the amount of potential face shields that are gonna be required. Well, we'll figure it out, you know. We'll all like we have to we'll all chip in and, you know, kind of figure figure out our own our way to get around all this. It is gonna be an adjustment. Um I think that it, like I said, it's going to be weird at first, but once we adjust, it'll be no different than us being tattoo artists. You know what I mean? It's going to be like second nature to us at that point. Like once we've done it a, a good handful of times. Yeah, but I agree. I, it, I bet it'll be less than a week before it just feels like this is the way. And I've been wondering about like how long it'll be that that, that is the way. Will the meta shift? Do you think yeah. the meta will shift back, or is the meta forever overblown, absurd I amounts think, of PPE? I think, I think eventually it'll we'll have some kind of normalcy. I think eventually it, it's not going to be soon. I feel you think like it ever gets back to where artists don't wear face shields? Um, and when I when mean, do you unless, think that is? Unless it becomes law, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, but he. I feel like it's more likely to be changed through artists adopting it permanently than it to be law. Like the tattoo industry, laws are fluid from state to state, but like yeah. some people deal with them and some people just say, fuck them. Cause there's, you know, most places like ours, it's not amazing regulation, <laughs> but um, there's like Connecticut really doesn't regulate a lot. So and I can't imagine if Connecticut doesn't regulate that there are states that really do because yeah. it's kind of like one of those states that's up your ass more than others anyway. But um, I bet there's there's going to be a shift like for sure in, in like a permanent meta shift for more PPE. Like there's no way we come out of this where it ever gets back to like the amount of PPE we used to use before COVID. I think so. Yeah, no way. Like I can already tell, I could tell you a couple of things that I know are never going anywhere, and uh, I think we discussed it with uh, Jim, which is the arm, yeah, um, covers. I don't, I think those are on the way, and I don't think they ever leave once they're in. Um, and I mean, I, everyone that I've talked to is intending on using something like that. I think, as crazy as it sounds for tattooers, especially like scrubs might be the new meta to income for tattooers like something like that i've been talking about it for a little while here and there jokingly but like i think that's gonna be something on the way 
I think there's definitely going to be like people are going to be competing. Like there's a new competition for how clean you're going to be. You know what I mean? So yeah. like you want to be sensible, but you do want to be as clean as possible. Like there will be people that will hold off indefinitely on getting tattoos until they're convinced that there's a shop that's operating with the standards. Just the way that I look at like a restaurant, like why would I trust them? Um, when I see the way people are operating, so you're going to have to like develop and and put out there and, and, and really be established as being like trustworthy and super clean beyond the usual means. I guess I can see that. I just feel like it's going to be eventually this, this illness is going to be treated as no different than like the flu, you know, or any kind of, any kind of thing like that, where we might have a case or an issue you know, we'll probably end up having a vaccine, but we'll probably have to take every year, <laughs> just like taking the flu. Uh, I think, I'm not saying it's going to be like right away, but I feel like at some point, there is going to be a sense of normalcy. It's going to be at a point where people are going to get comfortable again, and everything will be as normal as it can. Um, with the exception, which, you know, I'll take the consideration that you're, you know, there's going to be some things that we'll probably, as tattoo artists, we will uh, definitely take and then keep, you know, like you said. Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, only time's going to tell what's going to happen at this point. I think the face uh, shield shit might not stick. I think that the mouth masks might be something that a lot of people opt for going forward um afterwards i don't but, know i like i hate wearing them just because like it sometimes it makes it harder for me to breathe and you know especially yeah. there's gonna be people you know there's gonna be this artist out there who probably have a hard time breathing as it is you know what i mean <laughs> you know uh i mean unless you you know unless there's gonna be a couple of that designs face masks that are a little more comfortable breathable and disposable you know because in our industry, you're not gonna, you can't have, you can't wear a mask like that in, in the industry that we're in, and not it, and not have it be disposable. It's just not gonna work. Um, obviously, we, you know, you could buy masks like that right now. It's, it's just, I think it's gonna be a matter of comfort. Like people are, are gonna feel uncomfortable at some point, and some people will get used to it. Some people won't because it's just like, damn, I have a hard time breathing through this thing. It sucks. <laughs> so there was this, I don't know if you've seen the video, but interesting video going around. I, you're right with all this, but interesting video that displays why all of this is so true. And this is why I think a lot of the stuff is going to be here to stay because once the video evidence like circulates enough, most people that are interested in tattoo will have seen this, um, which is somebody performing a tattoo on fake skin uh using all the proper ppe using black light ink with a couple of drops of water inside of it and doing so with the lights on and then black lighting it afterwards <laughs> super high quality black light on what's on them and where and how exposed they are and their client is through the process of of a normal machine just like bouncing off the skin yeah and it's it's insane this shit is everywhere like they talked about it they were talking about it a little bit in this like crossroads section at the virtual tattoo gathering and i was like what video and so i had to look it up of course and i was shocked i was just as shocked as they were they were they were definitely referring to like a lot of the things that they were talking about as being like legitimized by thinking about that type of truth so yeah i'll have to find it so we can all watch it, and uh, I'll put it in the Discord or something when I do. Yeah. Yeah, there's a... Uh, that shit had me bugging. Huh. Well, definitely, uh, I'll have to look up. I'll have to research that video. So, I mean, we'll figure... As long as we can get something that'll be a little more breathable, all right, no problem. So, but we'll see what happens, I guess, at this point. Um... Have you considered possibly doing some kind of barriers in between the booths or, you know, 
Yeah, like temporary stuff. Yeah, like just not anything crazy, but like probably, probably we'll do something like that. Um, and probably I might rearrange some of uh, like the spots where people are tattooing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like. I'm trying to figure out exactly what the process is going to be. I mean, like I thought have... about having the back room be used, but now that definitely won't be the case for a couple of reasons. But yeah, we'll get more into it at the meeting. But um, yeah, there's definitely you know some changes, sensible changes, um, and then you know things that to some degree everyone's going to deal with. I think we're going to be operating at like the utmost of potential um non like ab the utmost ability to not cross contaminate so that will be like it'll all be a process and the annoying part i think will be like trying to get the clients to be educated and listening to like videos or like i'll, I'll have to make some sort of production or at least like a list of things to like really follow um and then, you know, making sure that that's going on in the shop on, like, a basis of the artist who's responsible for that client being responsible for both people. Yeah. I, because, yeah. you know, we're, we are the ones that have the best eye for the cross-contamination, so you're going to have to be watching out, and, like, clients are going to have to understand that, you know, you may be making suggestions or correcting things and stuff as the as the appointment goes on or the meeting goes on and then, you know, going forward, people will know how to operate again. Like you'll yeah. have to learn how to be a client in a, in a shop for sure. I get it. Uh, there was some like watching one of the virtual seminars. They were talking about something like that. Uh, you know, how, I remember what it was about. Uh, you know how, like, essentially, like we're gonna have our clients who who we have to essentially convince them only having one person in. You know, not bringing their whole crew or not bring like, you know, given that we work in Connecticut, like, do you feel like like we're not gonna be doing, you know? anybody under 18 right now because of the whole parenting thing you know i yeah you know, probably with you on that probably that at, for limited to everyone who doesn't have appointments on the books already yeah just because like it sucks too because i know you know we get clientele from, from i like think i'm and, you know i think i'm willing to sacrifice non-18 clients um for the time being yeah and in hopes that they still come you know when they're 18 um and just keep servicing the people like otherwise as best as we can it also to some degree will minimize interstate com like people coming and commuting from large like further distances because people have come you know from maine new hampshire uh vermont ridiculous lengths new york state everywhere <laughs> rhode island all to connecticut to to get that through so I don't really want that as like, I really don't want to service almost anybody that's from the Boston area or the New York city area. Um, just because of how populated and how condensed it's been there. Yeah. But the risks are going to be like, are there anyway, like you, we're going to work on clients. Some are going to have been responsible. Some are going to be the utmost of your responsibility. And we're going to be what I believe like, highly at risk of being contaminated if we don't be extremely careful yeah and like the risk of contamination obviously from people who are irresponsible is is high i calculated with my friend it's like it's not insane but like if you were at a gathering of four thousand people that's the that's the magic number where one of the people in the crowd is dying of covid as far as like the death rate in the population right now yeah. And I think too many people are putting it and saying like, oh, it's going to be treated like a flu. It's like this thing has already done like two or three times the numbers of what a flu usually does in a year in several months. 
people are the it's not as bad as a flu shit you don't hear anymore because the numbers are higher but it's just it's way worse it's way way worse (laughs) and it's definitely much more risky but i think we're at the point definitely where it makes sense to be back and functioning still especially being at the it's just at the same time as it how risky it is the average age of people dying of it is higher than the average age of people dying of old age so it's not like mega risky but i have heard of another young person like through the grapevine in my you know network of people that one person speaking to a client of theirs who's a young girl um here like on the on zoom or something sees like their spouse in the background had like developed a cough they were like oh it's just a cough because he's had it for like a day or something and no big deal just a cough blah 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 a week later dude's dead 30 some low 30s so boom it like it happens like that so it's like yeah but you, was d- it, you don't see it coming let me ask you is it was it caused by covid or was it something else oh it's covid yeah because like lately i've been feeling like the, con- with this the situation that a lot of people are, are are justifying certain aren't taking notice to to people's backgrounds health wise and associating oh, yeah. it with covid without actually doing the research like did this person have like a heart condition or did this person already have issues prior beforehand or you know a lot of a lot of times it seems like it's becoming more like lately like if somebody dies it's because of it's covid it's not like it's it's not because they had an issue prior you know or they've had health issues prior so like sometimes you kind of sometimes i've been, like i've been wondering about that lately like yeah there was a guest on there was a guest on joe rogan who was like a infectious disease doctor who was saying that there is in the insurance industry a lot of uh like corruption and um fraud happening in the sense of insurance companies saying that people are like and doctors are pressured to say people died of covid because they get paid a lot more to the hospital and shit when um you know for the insurance treatments and whatnot so Even if the person doesn't have it, they're like trying to get them hooked up to a ventilator for a period of time just to have like ventilated them and get the extra money from that. So like shit's grimy out there, like going to the hospital, even if you're if you're going for non COVID, you're in trouble because like the chances of them potentially like throwing you in the bin with the people who have it and fucking getting you exposed in some crazy ways is seemingly scarily high. So I'm like avoiding risk like the plague as well. Like I got fixes yeah. around the house that need like some climbing and stuff, but like I've been kind of hesitant because I don't want to be like needing medical assistance. I don't blame you. Like it's 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 scary, man. So but like like I said, man, I've been wondering about that kind of stuff because it seems like it's a little over the top. But the numbers are pretty legit, I think. Like they're inflated for sure, but at this point, even if it was half of the numbers, it would still be absurdly terrifying. And people's behavior upon this like light reopening that's happened everywhere is shitty, man. Memorial Day weekend pictures were fucking. That's true saw, horror. Seeing a, a videos of people like boardwalks beaches. of beaches, yeah, without masks and doing everything, it's like. Y'all don't even understand like what this shit is. No, I don't know. I don't get it. Like, it makes me wonder. Like, are people just really that ignorant, <laughs> or they just don't want to take the time to actually figure it out? Like, to make sure everything's good. Like, oh, greedy. Yeah, ignorance and greediness, man, and like irrationality. There's. It becomes so easy, like, when deprived of something that is normal to become, like, irrationally attached to it. Like, I don't know. I think I might have shared it before, but, like, there's been opportunities for, like, having takeout and stuff. And, like, the eventual occasion where we finally did get something that was not really able to be, like, fully heat sterilized was, like, a very paranoid moment for me to, like, even confront eating, like, a grinder. Because I'm like, this shit has way too many fresh parts. This is going to be a COVID sandwich right here. 
You won't even I, know um, until like a month from now. My like barber shops are like opening up in mass, and they're phase you know they're phase one, so they just like opened up like this week. Um, so clearly, like you know, it's like they get a haircut. Yeah, he looked I, fresh. Yeah, my barber. I was the first appointment he had, so like there was nobody else before him. They taken all like they're all wearing masks. They're all wearing everything. They have like hand sanitizer right at the front of the door. They actually have the door blocked so nobody can just kind of just walk in. Uh, like they he like he's like bro, I sanitize everything. We're good to go. Like they have like plastic uh, instead of like. Uh, they have like pretty much a plastic thing to cover over you instead of like anything that has any kind of fibers to it so they can just toss it like yeah the one time use you know, covers I, think, I heard about that I'm looking at them and I'm like this is pretty much how my how the shop's gonna be for us you know what I mean we're gonna be like it's just gonna be like that uh, but like I was you know I lucked out I was like his first first appointment being back so I, uh, there was nobody before me and you know, everybody was away from each other, at least seven or eight feet away from each other. So it worked out, like, nicely. Um, and, you know, watching this, talking to him about it, and he's like, man, it's been crazy trying to get this all set up and make sure everything's good. Like, it was just, it's one of those things, man, where it's, you know, everybody's wearing masks. Like, all the clients were wearing masks. I was wearing my mask. It's just, I don't know, man. It's like I've been looking, you know, driving around. I see these people, you know, I see people going for walks wearing masks. I see people, you know, going to stores wearing masks. I'm like, did you ever think that, like, this would ever actually be our lives at this point? You know, like, at any point in our lives? Like, if we've ever... Nah, but I, I mean, coming into this, I definitely, like, I'm not surprised at that being the result. I'm happy with it. I feel really good about it. Um, going out, I felt, I felt comfortable, and I'm like extremely paranoid about this type of stuff so when you went to your barber you felt comfortable i did because like i you know it's first thing i did i like walked down looked at everybody uh you know i've been going to my barber for years for years and you know you can see everybody was making sure they were ready and prepared and you know like even by like when i walked in my barber was like hit the hand sanitizer <laughs> like I'm, yeah. like I'm already ahead of you dan <laughs> So like it's it felt comfortable. It didn't feel like I'm like oh man, there's a chance I might catch something from these guys. But I think you know as long I feel like as long as everybody takes the necessary precautions that are needed, we should we will be all right. Yeah, uh, oh, I yeah. think we'll we'll feel comfortable. We'll we'll feel fine. Um, it's just gonna be an adjustment. You know, it's an adjustment period somewhere we have to just figure it out. So. Um, uh, yeah, I think, uh, like as far as going, um, with the direction of like going out in public and seeing that, that stuff going down, I'm still terrified of like going to a restaurant or something like that, but I'm encouraged to see that so many people are doing it and like, then we'll kind of see the results from that. Like I'm fine being like chilling back and watching other people as test dummies like how many people are going to get you know exposed through this little light reopening yeah we'll see like it's it i think that's why they're just doing everything in phases man i make sure everybody's good and hope for the best you know even though like i do feel like we should have been phase one because of the fact that we have uh Next to like nurses and doctors and stuff like that, we have pretty extensive knowledge on on health risks, you know, uh, you know, and that, that was one of the things that they were talking about on on seminars was that as our as artists, as tattoo artists, we have the ability of understanding the health risks because of what we have to do, what we have to go through to become tattoo artists, you know, having having the ability to know about bloodborne pathogens, have to know about first aid, CPR, have to know about all this stuff that essentially can affect us in some way. And it's so it, it it is a bummer that we don't get to be in the phase one to help us out, you know, because of the fact it makes the most sense. 
and but have something like a barber shop um, or you know like a salon or something like that open for first like just because people are, are bitching and moaning because they don't have they haven't gotten their hair cut yeah you know i i didn't care i'm like whatever you know what i'll get my hair cut eventually uh when i found out that he was open i'm like i'm see if i can get it first i don't have to actually worry about it i'm gonna be stressed about it and it worked out fine Fired. So. yeah i think that there will be a lot of people like that where they're like let me get in as early as possible and whatnot but um yeah, it's good to like it's good to go out and I think to also like see that there's still like a way to operate and like it's bugged out to like be back in society and uh I I look forward to not feeling that way, but I also think that it's going to like we're going to be looking at a little bit of a different society with how it like appears, but it'll be fine. Like it'll it'll become just so passive so soon, I bet. Yeah. There's, uh, I'm, I'm not super offended that we weren't necessarily included in, like, the reopening. I wouldn't be, like, chomping at the bit to just, like, get back still this soon, like, with, with the way the numbers look. But if it was legal, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to, with the right legal preparation as far as, like, release forms and insurance, you know, be having the business open. And, like, if it was, I would probably be, like maybe just waiting a little while longer for my personal readiness. But I think like June 20th is like where I've, I've been looking at the trajectory of like the numbers in our region and saying that mid June was going to be the time that I'd feel comfortable for a couple, like probably at least like a month to a month and a half now. And I think it still looks accurate. So I'm pretty stoked with the, with the date they've picked. And I was saying like when you were gone one time that I'm pretty much like, 80%, 85% 80%, 85% sure that this date will stick. So I think yeah. like we're we're on like a four out of five chance or what is that five out of six chance? That's why like like I said, I like I'm not gonna make any preps to announce the exact date just because of the fact you never know. Like yeah. we keep we keep getting close and then we just get pushed back. So well we're they're stringing close. us along too to some degree, you know what I mean? Like there's yeah. There's a strategy to the points at which they're announcing how far shit is pushed back um, and how soon to the normal date that would have been open that they are actually making those announcements. And I think it's all part of like stretching it as long as possible without creating civil unrest. So, yeah. So, I mean, we'll see. But, um, now of course we have the fucking riots everywhere, so it's like no, it's, it's not one thing. It's <laughs> COVID not one thing. and riots, dude. It's like there's our there's so much stuff happening at the same time that is like it's crazy. Like the police department just burned down with uh zero zero police presence to defend it. I'm like, damn, like that you is see, uh you see that's the video a weak of people move. People looting Target. No. There's a video I saw and people literally like busted through Target and started like just stealing everything from there. Taking like, everything. Yeah. Um, Dude, yes. I, I honestly like what is that movie where they're like, We're gonna be part of a loot? Is it Sunny? It's like we're looters now. <laughs> Looting everything. I think so. I think it is. That shit is so good and like for me personally, I feel like being being part of some store, like corporate store, being looted would be sick. Like it would be so exult. Like I'm so against that anyway, because I'm I'm such a obvious like anti theft, like anti stealing. Like treat others how you want them to be treated. But yeah, like if I see, like I think the event of it could be pretty fun. But obviously, it's not the right thing to do. No, <laughs> but <Maybe 30 laughs> I'll have to watch the video. Run upstairs real quick. Word. Give me a sec. It's that sublime song, April 26, 1992. That uh, always kind of triggered my interest. <laughs> Twenty-ninth, is it? 
29. Oh, there's a big discrepancy in the dates here on YouTube. April 29th? It doesn't make sense. I feel like my vote is 26th. 